Kia ora everybody and welcome back, this is Humankind. Today I'm doing something I should have done a long time ago and that's provide some feedback on the closed beta. Uh, but also, the reason why I've been holding off is because I've actually been waiting to hear something from the developers. And finally, with this tweet, we actually got some data out of the beta. We can see that 0.6% of players made it to bioplanes. There were over 17,000 different combinations of cultures tried. That's the one that really outstands me. I made a separate video on the trials and tribulations of that and I actually have some more to say, but we'll put that aside for the minute, and I'm going to reflect on the closed beta as a whole, and some of the things that I think could use a bit of work that I haven't already covered on the channel. First and foremost, I want to talk combat. Now overall, I have to admit, I do quite like the combat system in this game. It, it sort of takes you out of the map and into a little combat zone of its own, right? Where you can fight across three different sort of rounds or turns, um, attacking and defending as the aggressor and the defender. Fender. It's very interesting, there are a sort of fight or flight mechanics involved, uh, but there are some real limitations to it, I think, that really would have been nice to have been uh, fleshed out a bit more, and I'm hoping that the full version will flesh them out. For example, fleeing from combat uh, often results in these sort of wild goose chases across the map. Uh, I mostly experience this as the aggressor, but a couple of times as the defender. Uh, armies fleeing from combat, I think, should be punished in some way more meaningfully. I think that Actually, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, unless these armies are fleeing into terrain or uh, boundaries that are particularly defendable, i.e. they're stepping back into a fort or, or, or around some mountains, there really should be some penalties, at least attrition penalties. Maybe they lose 20% of their combat strength after fleeing, right? You think about, it, also, in reality, these units may be disorganized, disloyal, and I'd like to see that play out a little bit more in, in the system so that it leads to less of these uh, wild goose chase scenarios that I really don't think are particularly helpful in keeping with the pacing of the game as well, because that's really important. On the topic of combat and war, I also think it would be really nice if the developers could implement some changes with the territories and regions system in the map. You can see them here in this gameplay by those flashing blue lines that separate one territory or region from another. Uh, I found that while overall I actually really liked the system, and I've reflected on that already in other videos, so I won't bog down this commentary with my kudos of the system, but one thing, one or two things that I'd like to add is, firstly, I feel like the borders are a little arbitrary in nature, and, and you might say, well, <laughs> country borders are arbitrary in nature, you only need to look at a map to realise that a lot of these were simply drawn on a piece of paper, rather than being thought about logically and geographically, but in humankind, we're starting off so early in civilization, I think it makes sense that wherever possible, we should see more borders along natural boundaries, where borders are sort of quote unquote more naturally likely to exist. Cliff edges, around mountain ranges, along rivers. I often found that Sometimes these were features of borders, but more often than not they weren't. The borders felt a little bit arbitrary, and I would like to see them a little bit more grounded in reality around some of the things that would actually hold us off as humankind, and that would have held us off as, as a species way back when, thousands of years ago. It would have been those big cliff edges that you can see on the map right now. Look in the bottom right there, you can see the border doesn't align with them, right? And, and this isn't alone, I mean look everywhere and you can see it. I'd like to see more logic. Uh, examples could be to ignore non-cliff boundaries and try and place boundaries more along those cliff sides. I also think it would be interesting if region size was by and large a little less uniform. You can tell as you're playing the game and as you're looking at this gameplay that really by and large these regions appear to all be roughly the same size. Again, it would be more interesting if region size could depend on other things or at least be randomised. Uh, for example, it, it could depend on the total amount of food available in a region. Uh, a fertile region should uh, in theory, be smaller, and barren regions where there is less food and less resources as a whole, perhaps larger. Think about the real world. Compare the Sahara Desert, a largely unpopulated yet geographically uh, huge area, right? Larger than the continental United States by, I think, almost twofold. At least, it's, it's at least like one and a half times larger, yet it only houses around two million people. Why? Because it doesn't have a lot of food and resources and the climate isn't favourable. 
match that to humankind and I'd like to see some of that thinking play out in how the game draws these boundaries and maps out these regions. I think there's some real improvements that hopefully, I'm hoping, could be relatively straightforward for the developers to implement, but could make a huge difference to the humankind experience as a whole. Um, I know that these aren't massively significant things, but they shouldn't be, right? We're coming out of a closed beta, out of a, a, a lengthy beta testing period, and the full release is but days away, really, at this point. So I think we should limit our expectations with this uh, beta developer feedback. I've seen other, I haven't watched them, but, but I've seen other videos come up in my uh, timeline over the last few weeks, and some of them have been absolutely astronomical in length. And uh, while that's totally fine, I think we need to provide concise feedback. Speaking of which, let me go into my uh, next point and my sort of overarching and perhaps final point for this video. Difficult one to address because by and large I really like it and I touched on it at the start, it's cultures. Uh, recently I, I did a video on the channel, if you haven't seen it I'll summarise it in a TLDR. Basically there are six different eras, ten cultures to choose in each era. That leads to over 1 million, uh, a very helpful commenter told me 1.611 million, I believe, different combinations that are available in terms of how you choose your culture and move through the game. This leads to one ginormous balance issue, but also some real strengths. I won't spend too long dwelling on that because, I, like I say, I've already covered it. I'm going to cover it some more. But one thing that I would like to add is that I think the overall pacing of the cultural system is difficult in that it feels, or at least it felt to me as a player, and I'd be really keen for your feedback if you felt this too, viewers, but it felt to me like I couldn't really spend enough time with one culture if I didn't uh, choose to keep it and transcend that culture through multiple eras, right? So at each era point, I found myself thinking, oh my goodness, I've barely had a chance to build these unique units. Maybe I've built two or three of them. And I probably or usually hadn't managed to build my unique uh, emblematic quarters either. Now, I might not always want to do that, but there were definitely situations where I did. And I thought, oh my goodness, like I've only managed to build two or three of these. I want to build five. And that puts me in a difficult spot. I'm almost forced to transcend, to stay within my same culture through multiple eras. Yet the reward didn't feel like it was a, uh, anywhere near acknowledging uh, what it should be. What I mean by that is, when you change culture, you keep your emblematic trait from your previous cultures throughout the entire playthrough. That means by the, the sixth era, you could have six different traits that, ha you, that you've maintained, right? So your first culture might, might have given you 10% science, your second 15% influence, your third might have buffed your combat strength. You keep all of those. So there's a real benefit to changing your culture at each era, and no real benefit in keeping it unless, like I say, you haven't had a chance to bond or connect with it properly as a player or you haven't had a chance properly to take advantage of its emblematic units and its emblematic quarters right so it puts you in a really difficult spot do you blast through the game and play it what is probably in general mathematically the correct way to play it jump cultures each time pick up as many stackable culture traits as you can and carry those bonuses through or do you want to play more of a story-driven experience where you actually get to embrace all of these cultures, spend a great deal of time with them, maybe play two or three cultures, and try and sort of align them historically? I've heard your feedback, and I will address that issue uh, in a separate video, because that is too big to unpack in this developer feedback on the closed beta video. But I would like to see us be rewarded more for sticking with a culture, and that will allow us as players to explore these individual cultures much more and throughout different eras. Uh, one example really simply that comes off the top of my head could be that we buff the innate flat bonus that is provided by a culture. So as I say, you keep these traits as you carry through. Let's say it's 10% science. Well, instead of changing to a different culture and picking up another trait, why don't you allow me to boost my current one? Let's say if my current culture provides 10% science and I choose to transcend, it now provides 15 or it now provides 20%. Right? Even just doubling the bonus would be a great step towards encouraging players to stick within their current culture and to perhaps try two or three throughout the game instead of being forced by pure numbers and statistics to pick up the maximum six or seven. Thank you very much for watching this video, my reflections and feedback for the developers on the Humankind Close Beta. If you did enjoy, please do subscribe and stick around to my growing community here on YouTube with plenty more Humankind to come. Thanks for watching.